Come on up here, Larry. I'm, we're, we're singing next. This is Larry Ford, y'all. Florida's own Larry Ford. So while you're making your way up here, I'm going to tell this story. Just sit right there. Well, there's no chair now, so... Come on, Larry, you act like you're old. But I, a friend of mine called me and asked me if I'd meet her at the burrito shop, and I love Mexican food. It's the gift that keeps on giving. You know you can enjoy it several times during the day. It's not like Chinese, you eat it and 30 minutes later you're hungry. I mean, Mexican food is stick to the ribs, belch all day, kind of good food, you know? Well, I was going to meet Shelly, my friend, at the burrito shop, and I thought, it's such a beautiful day in Houston. You know, we don't have many beautiful days in Houston. Not like here in Florida, this beautiful place you live in. Y'all don't have much to look forward to with heaven. <laughs> But see, in Houston, we got a lot to look forward to. It is so humid down there, even the Pentecostals won't lift their arms. <laughs> That's all you can get out of. <laughs> but I was driving my Honda Silverwing, which was really just a moped with an attitude. <laughs> and somebody cut me off, just like Mama said they would. Cut me off. And I slammed on the brakes. They pulled out in front of me and they didn't see me and I slammed on the brakes. It was either enter their trunk or slam on the brakes, you know? So I slammed on the brakes and come to find out motorcycles don't have anti-lock brakes. <laughs> I slammed on the brakes and started heading face first into Shepherd Drive without a helmet. Oh, I, I heard that self-righteousness out there. <laughs> yes, I didn't wear my helmet that day. I was only going a mile. And it's so hard to find a helmet big enough for my head. I got one, but I had to order it off the internet. I've always had such a big head. I used to come home from school and say, Mama, everybody's making fun of my big head. She'd go, oh, Mark, it's okay. <laughs> Let me dry your eyes. <laughs> so, um, I slam on the brakes, y'all. I'm heading face first into Shepherd Drive in Houston, Texas without a helmet. And I remember thinking, this going to hurt. <laughs> and whatever you do, stay awake. I told myself, stay awake, Mark. I, you better stay awake. Because you know I hate to miss anything. <laughs> I slammed my head face first, Cheryl, into, into Shepherd Drive. And I popped up. And I was awake. And I was so thrilled that I was awake as I'm sliding across the road. I start waving at the car to come around me and waving at everybody. And I lost my hearing because I went deaf for about 30 seconds. Well, more about three minutes. It's just this loud ringing noise. I remember that. It was right. I couldn't hear anything. And my head was bleeding, but no brains were hanging out. So I thought, that's good. And uh, I was going to push them back in if they were. But I'm sitting on the side of the road and this redneck pulled. I love rednecks. They are my people. And he pulled up in a truck and he looked down at me and he said, do you need an ambulance? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I can't hear a word you're saying. He went, woo, woo, woo. I said, yeah. <laughs> and I looked down at my knee and it was over here. And I remember thinking, now that don't look right. That's just, that should not be over there. But it didn't hurt yet. So I looked to the side of the road and I saw some fellas standing there waiting on jobs. I said, could you boys help me off the road? And they said, we don't speak English. I said, will you L help me off the L rodeo? I think I broke the L Malagio. And once they understood my Spanglish, they came to me like the good Samaritans that they were. And they helped me off the road and they stayed with me to the ambulance showed up. So I called Shelly and told her I wasn't going to make it to the burrito shop. And she called Dina, who called Colleen, who called Bubba, who called Philip, who called Sandy. I mean, before the ambulance ever got there, I had a good crowd. They all started showing up. Finally, the ambulance showed up. And the first thing those boys did, I'm telling you, they didn't ask. The first thing they did was cut off my britches. <laughs> you know your mama was right. <laughs> All 
always wear clean underwear. Yeah, I always wonder why Mama said that. Now I know. And mine were clean before I hit Shepherd. Well, they were a little freckled after that. Well, I'm just, it's just family here. I'm telling you what happened. They cut them off in front of Dina, Shelly, Colleen, and all those Mexican men. And then they stuck me in the ambulance. We start heading into the hospital. The first thing I noticed, the ambulances don't have shots. And that was before I had man boobs and they're choking. What is, what? Old age is not for sissies. Well, actually it is. Even sissies got to get old. But they took me to the hospital. And when they arrived, I was in the most pain I've ever experienced in my life. I'm telling you, I was in pain. And they would not give me anything in the ambulance to kill the pain. And when they arrived at the hospital and they tried to move me from the ambulance bed to the hospital bed was the moment in time. I became so thankful that I am a Baptist. Because you Pentecostals will go to hell for what I said. <laughs> Thank God for what saved always saved. Lord, I didn't even know I knew those words. They come flying out of me like old friends, y'all. Oh, uh, I'm telling you Pentecostals, you should jump ship for that doctrine alone. Because that way you know, you know, God will forgive you. I'm telling you, I did not know that you could hurt that bad. And the doctor came walking down the hallway. He heard me screaming and cussing. And he came over and said, do not touch him. Do not touch him. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> and he brought me a morphine drip. <laughs> I became a Pentecostal. I could hardly speak English. I went from hellish pain to heavenly gain. But I'm telling you, do not have, as you get older, and you are all getting older, I, I can see you. Own it. Own it. You're old. Own it. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Own it. You can look at young people and know in your heart that they're going to blink. And they're going to look in a mirror and they're going to be old too. I mean, that first time you pass that mirror and you see that old person looking back at you. It's shocking. But I've had that, I forgot where I was, where I was talking. Where I, was talking. I was somewhere, I was going somewhere. Oh my, what? Oh, the morphine. Let me tell y'all, y'all should not be in pain. You, as you age, don't let them put you, don't let, get you a drip. Get you a drip, it comes with a button, it's like a video game. You can hit it every 10 minutes, and hit, especially when that relative walks in there in that hospital room that you don't really like. Hit that morphine drip, you will love them. Man. But I have found out through the years that, uh, that, that stuff happens, you know? And, and, uh, and it doesn't matter what, we, what we, as we age, we're going to have stuff that's going to go, it's going to break. I broke my femur January, the same leg. I broke it ja the following January by falling like an old person in my home. <laughs> Plus, I'd taken an Ambien, but you know. <laughs> well, I fell asleep on the couch. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor. <laughs> And I put my and I can't get up and I put my hand over here and it bends right there. Well Gaither had to quit taking Ambien too. One day home, we were on the bus, he took an Ambien, went to the back of the bus, next thing, I'm gonna tell it he ain't here. <laughs> Mike on all, all the vocal band was in the front of the bus. Bill had gone to bed. Next thing we know, Bill's coming to the front of the bus in his tidy whities <laughs> with that CPAP machine strapped to his head. And stood there in front of God and everybody and ate an entire pan of banana pudding and didn't remember it the next morning. But I do. 
there are some things you can't unsee. But one of the great things about all those videos is I've got to meet so many wonderful people like Cheryl and Larry Ford. I mean, you should be proud that these people live in your part of the country.